Hi, I'm Pam Warren. I've written a book which I'm really proud of, and I'm hoping some of you might want to buy it and read it, and it's called From Behind the Mask. Why did I write the book? To be honest, it was because I was asked to. Um, I had a literary agent and they'd approached me and asked me to write the book. So I started, but I did treat it as job work, particularly sitting down at the computer every single morning, working for five or six hours and then stopping for the day. And what I produced was a book, but it just wasn't very good. It had no feeling, it had no compassion. It, it didn't really tell the truth as well. I was very diplomatic. So the agent gave me this feedback and I just threw my hands up in the air and thought, that's it, I'm not going to do this now. So I stuffed it to the back of the cupboard. And then one day I was clearing out some paperwork and saw the manuscript and thought, mm, I'll have another look. And that's when the penny dropped and I thought, actually, this is a good story. And there are things that should be said here, but I can see what the agent was getting at. So I sat down and I rewrote it from start to finish. And in each chapter, I put myself back there. I tried to remember how I felt, what pain I was in, if I was in any, what medication I was on, and most importantly, what I truly felt or thought about other people. Because I think, again, if I'm gonna show the journey I went through, it has to be an honest one. Pre-crash Pam is probably somebody that not many people would have got on with. Um, I was a financial advisor, I was running around drinking champagne, I had the latest car, but everything about my life was about money. I was lucky to see my family once a year, and that wasn't their choice, it was my choice. And yes, I worked hard and I played hard with my friends that were also financial advisors, um, but the quality of my life back then was very one-dimensional. And I always remember when the train crash was happening, and I explain this in the book, that one of the last thoughts that was going through my head was, it hasn't been worth it. And I meant my life up until that stage, in that flash, I suddenly thought to myself, what was I doing? I was wasting what life I had. Um, and it wasn't so much a conscious decision, but when I got home and had recovered enough, enough after hospital, um, I then almost had to rebuild myself as a person and decide what sort of person I wanted to be. And now I'm a much softer person. I think I'm far more approachable. Um, my family and friends definitely come before anything else I do. I just won't have it any other way. And um, because of that, these whole new different doors have opened to me about what I do for a living, where I travel to. Um, my circle of friends has extended enormously because of that attitude. Um, so therefore, in a way, I'm having a better life now than I had before. I originally set up the Patent Survivors Group um, really as a support group. Because of all the calls I've had by telephone with other survivors, um, we then arranged to meet for that first meeting. And um, that's what we needed. We needed each other to talk to. And we needed, if one of us had a problem with, I don't know, doctors or medication or legal aspects, um, the other survivors would then be there to help them find whatever they needed to or come up with suggestions. And I can't remember when it was, but one of the other survivors piped up during one of the meetings and said, um, have we decided that what we got told in the papers about how the crash happened is the actual truth? And none of us had thought about it. So um, another one piped up, well, don't you think we should? So that's really when we started investigating it as to exactly what had happened from the technical side and what the rail companies had actually done. And that's where we suddenly started moving into campaigning work. But we remained and were, until it finished, a support group. I think that just faded into the background a bit.
the best day that I still remember is um, for the Padma Survivors Group was definitely the first anniversary because we'd all come a long way. We were all making great steps in our recovery and from the campaign point of view, we, we were being taken seriously by the rail industry and the government. So we really thought we'd achieve a lot in a year. So we wanted to have this celebration. So I booked this lunch at a beautiful hotel in Gloucester, which was actually set up in the Cotswolds. So you had the backdrop, all these rolling hills, remember the sun shining because we'd picked the summer. Um, the survivors were there with their other halves. There were children running around. And I always remember I popped out of the room for a little while. I was walking back towards it, but I stopped behind the doors before I went into the room, purely because all I could hear was the laughter, laughter of the adults and the children all mixing in together. And I just felt so proud for all of us that you know, we'd come this far and we were laughing again. And that to me, I mean, it still makes me feel a bit emotional. That to me was the proudest day. My future is forever changing, to be perfectly honest. Um, I think now I appreciate life so much that my attitude is I'm quite happy working because I enjoy work, that's the sort of person I am. But I wanted to make me enough money to then play, play a lot. I love travelling and I'm absolutely determined that I want to travel all around the world. So that's the reason I work. I have to temper that with my health because my health cannot stand a regular 9 to 5 job 365 days of the year. But I found project type work very handy because then I can work really hard, but uh, then have a rest afterwards. Um, I do know every morning I wake up and I tend to not be 100% sure what I'm going to be doing during the day, but that's quite exciting. Um, so I find that obviously appeals to me. And um, I do some professional speaking as well, which I'm hoping is going to open up these avenues so that I can continue traveling. One thing I do want to do is next time I have to meet my maker, is to go, wow, that was fun. That's definitely me.